Hi y'all, my name is Amber and welcome to my channel. Today, I said I wanted to come on here and do a, a short video. Hopefully it ends up being short y'all, because I be talking. But I came on here and do a short video um, because I wanted to talk about um, another video I saw. So this isn't a response video necessarily, maybe a reaction, I don't know. But I, I just wanted to talk about a video I saw with um that sarah jakes roberts yeah sarah jakes roberts that she um had on her channel it was an old one it was about six months ago but it talked about um being being content in a waiting season i believe that was the title of the video so being content in a waiting season i said you know what that this strikes a nerve with me darling you know just it strikes a nerve with me because you know, being content in a waiting season, it is not easy. I mean, the definition of difficult, it is not easy. Um, I just wanted to share to maybe help some others, you know, other people who may be going through a number of things. But being content in a waiting season takes patience. <laughs> It takes strategy and you really do have to know what you can rely on and what you cannot rely on um, because when you're in transition to move from one place in your life to another um, you can't rely on the same things all the time that you once were able to rely on uh, you may have relied on a particular person, friend, um, a particular system. You know, oh, when I cry and complain, I call these two people. And when I need something, I call these two people. Or what? You, you may not be able to do any of that. Like none of it. <laughs> when you're in a transitional um, place in your life, in a waiting season, you're like, well, what am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to count on? Who can help me? Who can really help me? You know, and it's just like, you know, if you're following Christ, as I am, <laughs> I try to more and more each day, you really do have to ask God, what am I supposed to do and who is supposed to help me? Um, because certain people can disrupt what's going on. Um for your growth and your waiting season. So this is the thing. They're like, well, how can somebody disrupt what God has for me? They're not going to disrupt what God has for you. But you involving yourself with people who you're not necessarily supposed to in your waiting season, you're just bringing on more trouble that you're going to have to work yourself out of, so to speak. You, you're, you have to, there's just more lessons to learn that you may not have had to go through those particular ones if you just kind of pull back and listen to what God is telling you about who can help you, who should you be talking to, who should be in your life, you know. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> being content in a waiting season. And by the way, I call my hair <laughs> to do this video. Because I have been looking fuzzy all day. Like, it's the same style. I've been wearing this style, I don't know, I'm going to say it, last year and this year. I wear it mostly all the time because I can wear it dressy. And I can just wear it to, like, pick up, draw off the kids. I wore it this morning to go out there and cut the lawn. And all it is is just my hair kind of parted this way and this way. And pulled to the side and twisted. So I have two giant twists. And I have two in the back that I twist the smaller ones. Because I have like small hairs in the back and they be hurting. So I'm like, mm -mm, I can't take all this big hair and pull up them small hairs. And I'll be like, dear God, why does this hurt me? So no, I just do two little ones back here. And then the big mama's up here. And I pull them back. And the headband is just fancy because I just want to be fancy today. Okay. So anyway, let's discuss. Well, that's, I ain't taught in so long. I have not taught in so long. No, I'm not really teach. I'm more sharing. This is like sharing. 
as I say that, I'm like, I'm probably ashy because I was making pinto beans and rice and washing dishes. So my hands are ashy a little bit. Ooh, I'm, it's it's going to be okay, though. So. Being content in a waiting season. <clears throat> so I wrote some notes. That's what I'm actually sitting here looking at. Um, so you pray and then discover and heal. So when you're praying, you're praying to God and asking him, like I said earlier, what, <clears throat> excuse me, what do I need to do? What should I be doing, working on? Who should I be talking to? And about what? Okay, because he may be very particular about what he wants you to share with who. And it's not about, you know, dissing your friends or your family necessarily, but sometimes they don't understand what it is God wants you to do. And so if he tells you, hush, about A or B thing, whatever it is, you know, you're doing or he has you working on, that's what you need to do. Okay. <clears throat> so pray, discover, and heal. So that's the prayer. When it comes to discovery, God's going to start telling you different projects, different things to work on. <laughs> now, some things you may say to yourself, you may not want to do. You may say it's a lot of work. Or I don't know if I have the time for that. Just this morning, Lord, let me tell you, let me tell you. I was in prayer this morning and I said, Lord, why am I procrastinating on these few projects? So I feel like God gives me list of things to do, right? They're not things that completely overwhelm me. But I feel like when I involve myself in other things and see, I'm talking about myself here, and just like I mentioned earlier, you know, involve yourself in other stuff, you have to work your way out of it. But I feel like sometimes I involve myself in other things or activities that kind of take away my energy for what I'm supposed to be doing. Yes. Yes, it's not oatmeal's rice. <laughs> Go this way and close the door. I'll be out in just a second. but anyway <clears throat> so it really does um just cause you more frustration more things to learn more things to work your way out of so discover you discover by praying and then excuse me you begin to heal so with healing after you discover what's going on with your mindset maybe um your reactions to things how you feel um, what your connections to a person, place, or thing may be. Um, it may not be something that, it may not be a healthy connection one way or another. And God doesn't want that in your life. Like he can bless you in so many tremendous ways if that kind of stuff doesn't exist in your life. Those are kind of like stumbling blocks, you know, like, <laughs> you know, your blessings on the other side of whatever, you know, whatever you can't, you know, seem to get around. But anyway, so pray, discover, and heal. So I journal. So journaling is something I really found to be extremely helpful to me. I want to say when I was probably, definitely when I was a teenager, but when I was, I want to say when I was like maybe uh, in the second or third grade, I wasn't journaling about much in second and third grade, but I was introduced actually in the third grade to expository writing, right? And I was just like, expository writing? Like I'm in third grade, like what are we saying here? Sounds like big writing, right? But expository writing, journaling, you're just writing down anything that you want to write down. And oftentimes, I'm sorry, I moved the camera, you guys. But oftentimes when you begin to write, you know, you'll begin to want to to tell your stories. You'll begin to want to get your your that energy out, whatever it is that could be bothering you. And the longer you write, the more you'll come up with and the more will come out. And you may write through tears, choking and snotting. You may write through, it could be days. You could spend a whole week writing, day after day after day just writing and writing and writing. I have filled up journals. The biggest healing process that I did in my entire life happened, I want to say, is it three years ago now? Probably three years ago now. 
it was massive. Massive and miraculous. I could not believe it. I literally felt for many years that I was stuck. I was like, I think I'm going to be one of those people who's like, you see those people who are stuck one way or stuck this way. I was just like, I don't even know how I even got this way, you know, and I'll talk more about it over time. And a lot of it had to do with my upbringing. And, you know, there was just a lot that needed to be said, but I didn't really have a whole lot of people that would be able to hear what I'm saying, understand it and give some useful advice about what to do now, now that I know, you know? So anyway, <clears throat> let's see here. So pray, discover and heal journal. So change your diet. So your diet, not just what you eat, what you consume um, with your eyes, with your soul, you know, changing your diet is really going to help you. That's my six year old is out here, but changing your diet is really going to help you to understand how your environment affects what you think, how you act and respond and, you know, what you really do feel and how you connect to what's going to be your next higher self, your the next self of you um, healed, acting better, doing better, making better decisions that affect you and your family better. Don't knock over my coffee now, dear. You see it here? Okay. So, <clears throat> you got to close that door too. All right, so changing your diet, what you watch on TV, YouTube, um, the music that you listen to, the social media uh, websites that you go on, the content that you consume, you gotta be very careful about, very careful about that. Um, because, I mean, you might be following 2,000 people on, on some, any one of those uh, social media websites that may be cut all the way down to four. Okay, so for some people, that feels like the torture dome, you know, to have to really cut out so much in their lives. But if you're looking to go to the next level, you are definitely definitely seeking to be set apart. If you're going to be set apart, you got to understand that that takes deliberate effort. <laughs> you know, to be different. And it's not just being different to be called different. It's being different because you have a purpose that requires a certain amount of energy from you. Like your purpose is not just some thing. It really, it's a real assignment on your life and your talents, your energy and your resources. Like your purpose is that powerful. And it's like, if you ignore that, you basically fight against yourself all your life. And then if you, you don't know to cut out so many other things that are fighting against your purpose, you're, you're in a, a another battle <laughs> and you're just like, I'm always tired. I'm exhausted. I don't like how this is working. I never get along with these people. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's war all the time, one way or another, right? So it's the cutback is you got to do it, you know. And people are going to be mad. They're not going to understand. They're going to talk about you. And not only are they going to talk about you, they're going to talk about the next person that does that to them and the next person that does that to them. They'll talk about anybody. So don't feel special because they talk about you. <laughs> you know, everybody say, talk about Jesus. <laughs> okay so we'll go with that journal changing your diet you know what you consume you can change what you eat as well um you definitely want to be healthy going through any kind of transition you want to try to be as healthy as you can be I'm not saying you have to be perfect people you know especially as you get older a lot of older adults deal with a lot of things i'm 42 you know so i've dealt with some things but at the same time you want to try to do better um, with your, you know, your food diet. Try to do better than you've done before. 
my child is in my closet. <laughs> and she done brought out my keychains that was way up at the top. And I did not like my keychains to be messed with. Aisha. I know, but you weren't supposed to take them out. Little kids, child, they be in your stuff. <sighs> and then when they be all lost and broke, I'll be sad. Like my things. Where are my things? See, that closet door is unlocked because I got this ring light. I didn't even turn the ring light on. I'm just using it to hold my phone. See what happens when you leave the closet unlocked? Anyway. All right, so schedule, schedule more sleep. Get down and turn that light off. And I want you to go on out until I'm done. I'm almost done. Schedule more sleep. Okay. So resting is important for your, to keep your stress level low you know to you need to recover is what i'm saying from your days so if you're not sleeping you're not recovering you're kind of just half resting and going right back into your stressful life that's 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 gonna it's gonna be an explosion after a while you know physically mentally emotionally spiritually you can't keep going like that forever you know so if you're going through transition from one place in life to another and, you know, I never did mention the transition I'm actually going through. Or did I? I don't know. But anyway, my transition right now is I'm going from being married to being divorced to being a single parent. So I was married for 12 years and we have three children together, three little girls together. And we are recently, finally divorced. And so my transition is going from being a wife to being a single woman as well as a single mother so we'll talk about that a little bit later i'll give you guys some information about you know some things i've kind of realized in the last last i guess last year or so but really in the last couple of months i feel like more has come to me about this um I won't mention it now because I'll go on down a tangent somewhere. You'd be like, Amber, wait, wait a minute now. I thought we was talking about something else. Being content is what we're talking about. Okay. So change diet, schedule more sleep, exercise. Your exercise does not have to be, you know, I ran four miles today. <laughs> um, you know, I went, I go to the gym, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday, Friday. You don't have to do all that. You just need to do something a little more than you normally do each day. So whether that's for 10 minutes a day or five minutes a day, whether that's okay, I take a walk or I do aerobics on um, like YouTube aerobics. You know, you just find one of the YouTube channels you like and they're doing aerobics. You don't have to do the whole half an hour, 45 minute session. You know, you can do it for 15 minutes. You can do it for 10 minutes. You do it based on how you feel. You don't need to overexert yourself because what's going to happen is each day you do it, you're just going to get stronger and better. So you're going to want to do it longer because it won't feel like you're doing anything after five minutes, you know, after you've done it for a week or so. Okay, so schedule more seat, <coughs> excuse me, exercise. <clears throat> exercise you can also like take a walk in your neighborhood some people say i don't want to walk my neighborhood they ain't safe you can go to the mall and walk early in the morning you can walk the hour before closing you can walk the mall people do it all the time you can find a track a school track a college track oftentimes they're open to the public especially in the summers and the evenings where you can just walk um you know or like i said do some some we call it a uh, little uh, exercises from the YouTube videos. Okay. Another thing to do to be content in your way to send find projects to work on. So I have been working on so many projects, so many. But find a project uh, to work on, whether that be cleaning out your garage, your closet, underneath your bed, 
<laughs> getting rid of all your clothes that no that no longer serve you like stuff that you don't want to wear no more i don't care what you paid for it who gave it to you none of that stuff matters in transition because you you those are attachments when you you have to be careful about uh your attachments because some of those attachments will just hold you back from growth you know, they will hold you back from growth. Uh, God doesn't need that. He doesn't want that to be something that you, um, like, can't get past. Oh, you know, I I have this uh, pair of shoes in here. You know, I never wear them, but I remember I wore them, you know, a long time ago to go here or there. Okay, well, do you use the shoes? No. Are they valuable to you past where you wore them at? Like, are you planning to use the shoes? No. Okay. And people do have these attachments to things. But what God taught me is that you have to be careful not to make something else a God. Unknowingly. Unknowingly. You know? And it's like, oh, I, just because I'm keeping stuff I like or want, I have sentimental attachments to it, doesn't make I'm making it your God. No. But we live in this world, but we're not supposed to be of this world, right? Um, the more things that you end up having literally an unnatural attachment to, those things have power over you. They have power over you. And if those things have power over you, that's a space in your life where you're not willing to let anybody in. You're not willing to let God in or your, your therapist in. You're not willing to really talk about that. Like, why are you really holding on to this? Or why? You're not really willing to, to do that. You know what I mean? Because you've made it. You've given it a, a, a space in your life that is hugely important to where basically if somebody did something to it stole it from you or destroyed it you darn near have a nervous breakdown that is a lot of power you know and i'm not talking about just keeping your average things i'm just talking about people know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying if you if you keeping that coat and you know why you keeping that coat you keeping that coat because so and so said something to you in that coat, and that coat is extra special to you. You ain't gonna never get rid of that coat, but you ain't gonna never wear that coat again. And if anybody did something to that coat, you giving that coat that power, you know. And so, you gotta make space in your life. You gotta make space. I've done it. I've done it. God has told me. God has told me to throw away clothes that I had on. Like, everything I had on. He told me to throw it away. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I mean, but it's not old. And I really do like these pants. They're kind of, they're not so, so new, but I, I really do like them. You know, I found them on sale. And God would be like, Mm -hmm. You done talking, cause guess what? I ain't doing what I said. Okay. All right, where are we at? Find projects to work on. Yeah, clean the garage. You can do gardening. I tried that. I'm still doing gardening. A lot of different kinds of projects with gardening. I love to cook. If you've seen any other videos on my channel, um, I love to cook. And look, I'm running out of time. I knew I was gonna get back. Okay, hold on. Um, let's see here. Oh, I'll just say this. Finally, read books. Okay. In terms of reading books, don't just run and get a self-help book about anything. You want to make sure that you're getting a book um, that's going to just help you uh, where you are. So you need to kind of assess where you are. Pray about it. Ask God about it. Assess where you are. Try to find out what it is you need to be thinking about. If you know that you have a negative mindset, you're looking for a positive one, that actually takes practice. You can practice thinking positively. And every time something negative comes up, 
you can it's not that you have to lie about it you can admit it and see it and know it but you can not make it a part of your 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 life and demeanor you can learn to speak positively it takes practice but anyway that's all i have to say because <laughs> i'm literally down to seconds 46 seconds uh worth of space because i have other videos on this phone so please check out my other videos, uh, some of my cooking videos. I will be back to talk about more. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.